Beneath the bright lights of Singapore's immaculate facade lies a thought-provoking narrative that not many people know about. There is a shadow that looms over the so-called Lion City. Unjust labor practices thrive in the shadows, governmental transparency wavers, and censorship casts its ominous shadow. The unwavering quest for progress, though commendable, conceals the unspoken burdens shouldered by its citizens. By delving into the dark side of Singapore, we are confronted with a compelling exploration that forces introspection and raises questions about the delicate equilibrium between success and sacrifice. In this video, we will see the lion in the eyes of the prey looking right into the greatness of the top carnivore. And when you are on the other side of the hunter, astonishment is not what you'll feel, it's horror. This is the dark side of Singapore. Singapore's success is loud and booming, and the international world has taken notice of the progress of Singapore's economy. Back in 2017, the small country in the Asia-Pacific was branded as the world's second most open economy by the Heritage Foundation's Index of Economic Freedom, and was also awarded as the world's second most pro-business regime by the World Bank's Doing Business Report. If that doesn't seem so impressive to you, realize that the key word here is world which means that this small, unassuming country was able to surpass most big economies worldwide. In fact, today, Singapore's economy is one of the most stable globally, with no foreign debt and a consistent positive surplus on top of all that. Despite the country's small domestic market and lack of natural resources, the Lion City was able to weather the financial crisis of 1997 and 2008. If all these are still not enough to paint a picture of success, Singapore was able to tough out the global pandemic and is currently on the way to recovery. But what is it that keeps Singapore going? It's important to realize that there is always another side of a coin, and behind that shiny front is a dark, unseen side. This seemingly gleaming country hides bones in its closet. Aside from its great feats, it is also home to rising income inequality, great wealth disparity, human trafficking, and the infamous corrupt politics. Based on the annual report by Credit Suisse, there are 298,650 millionaires in Singapore, of which 73 have more than half a billion in wealth. But when we take a look at the other end of the spectrum, 16% of the country's adult resident population, or around 790,000 people, have a net worth of less than $13,500 which shows a glaring disparity when it comes to wealth. But wealth is not equal to income. Maybe the other looks better. Take a look at this table. The figures shown were the average monthly household income per member of the bottom 10% and top 10% during the past five years. It is clear as day how the income of the bottom earners is just a fraction of those that are at the top. But what's so bad about these numbers? They don't look good because if they could talk, what they'll say is, the rich only get richer and the poor continue to get poorer. But if we delve deeper, we will see how wealth and income inequality are just the tip of the iceberg. There are greater and more sinister issues lying beneath the surface. The issue of labor exploitation and its foreign workers. Amidst the landscape of income disparity, another interconnected concern arises the pervasive exploitation of labor, often affecting those in lower earning brackets. This issue transcends the boundaries of Singaporean soil, affecting a diverse range of individuals beyond solely foreign workers. The phenomenon which greatly highlights the unjust working conditions of foreign workers has been brought to light when COVID-19 hit. However, since the Singaporean government-controlled media paints a narrative of happy workers, some issues are swept under the rug. But just because it's hidden from sight doesn't mean it does not exist. According to the Asia-Pacific Migration Network, foreign workers in Singapore usually work long hours for low pay in most hazardous conditions. Aside from that, these employees often face abuse by employers and labor contractors. In an article published by Columbia University, there exists a pattern of circular migration in the country wherein low-wage migrants simply move back and forth between their home country and abroad. This creates little to no security for the workers, because the temporariness lessens their prospects of settling in Singapore. The migrants are subjected to exploitation due to restricted job mobility, 
weak wage protection, poor safety standards, and the constant threat of termination. Labourers are the heart of the economy, but behind the curtains lie stories of abuse, discrimination, and violation of rights. Singapore has steadily climbed the economic ladder, arguably the strongest economy in Asia. But like any predator, it hunts prey within the ecosystem. In this story, the prey is the overseas workers from the Southeast Asia region. Aside from economic rankings and unfair labour laws, Singapore has also been topping the charts when it comes to crony capitalism. In fact, when The Economist magazine released its 2023 Crony Capitalism Index, Singapore ranked fourth by crony sector billionaire wealth as a percentage of GDP. But what the hell is crony capitalism anyway? The concept of crony capitalism essentially refers to an economic system where politically connected individuals and businesses gain an advantage over competing interests due to government policies. In normal people's words, if you're friends with the rich and powerful, you get advantages. May it be in business or politics. In theory, this social injustice should not exist because it's unfair to the general public. But then again, this is the real world, so here we are. If you're thinking, the rich men must be having a field day there, then you're absolutely right. Did you know that the country has been tagged as the smuggler's den? And that nickname was born thanks to the abundance of multinational corporations on its soil. Examples of these in Singapore include Chevron, Merck and Co, General Electric, Procter and Gamble, General Motors, and UPS. This might come off as unusual, because it looks good on paper, right? At first glance, it seems that Singapore and the MNCs in the country have a mutually beneficial relationship. Still, digging deeper, the country actually feels the negative effects of these so-called partnerships. Since foreign service companies are a strong force in the country, many private domestic businesses fear that they are being overpowered by the MNCs, and their fears are not unfounded. On top of all of that, since there are lots of foreign investors on the land, the smuggling of contraband merchandise has also become a norm on its grounds. The abundance of businesses and investors are definitely key factors to the country's economic growth, but are the ill effects worth it in the long run? With all these hidden issues coming to the surface, it's pretty clear. Singapore definitely has transparency issues. Money laundering is another sickness this lion has. Singapore has bank secrecy laws and lack of routine currency reporting requirements. The result? The perfect tourist destination for drug traffickers, criminals, terrorist organizations, and friends looking to launder money. The country's discretion when it comes to banking makes it an attractive avenue for those who want to hide illegal funds. Did you know that the country has bank secrecy laws that are even stricter than those of Switzerland? In terms of security, it definitely is secure, but on the other hand, this tight discretion also benefits those that are hiding illegal activities. This lack of transparency when it comes to finances is a double-edged sword. On one end, it offers great security for hard-earned money, but on the other hand, it also offers protection for stolen wealth. Now, before we continue to the next part of our list, if you found this video interesting, then please support your resident economist and help me by clicking that like button. And now we go on to one of the biggest issues worldwide, the environment. Although not all, it's quite a common denominator for countries that thrive on businesses to have lacking environmental laws. It seems to be one or the other. To pave the way for development, you must turn green lands into skyscrapers. With the rapid urbanization and the booming commercialization in the country, there lies the issue of sustainability. And now, the Lion City faces a plethora of sustainability challenges such as water scarcity, energy security, carbon awareness, waste generation, import dependency, and biodiversity conservation. Aside from sustainability issues, it seems like Singapore is also at risk of nature's wrath. The country is a densely populated, low-lying island state which is extremely vulnerable to rising sea level and coastal erosion. If that isn't scary enough, most of its business and industrial infrastructures lie less than two meters above sea level. With a natural disadvantage such as this one, I can't help but think, where would Singapore be in the future? With everything we talked about, you might be asking, how come these things aren't talked about more? The answer is simple. Singapore's government controls its media. A little background first. 
Singapore is a one-party state under the People's Action Party, or PAP. The party was voted into power in 1959, and they have won every election that came after ever since. This long-standing rule allowed the party to create narratives and national myths. This great leverage gave them the power to shape the perception of the people, and they shaped perception through the media. From domestic newspapers, radio stations, to television channels, all are owned by government-linked companies. And with that, what follows is news coverage that generally supports state policies and customary self-censorship. What's the implication of those? You guessed it right, lack of freedom of expression. In Singapore, the government uses the threat of terrorism and racial and religious tensions to justify restrictions on freedom of speech. When it comes to civil liberty and freedom of expression, it seems like the end of the tunnel is still far away. As recently as 2015, there has been a tightening of control by the PAP government. Even online posts by bloggers and independent writers are being closely monitored. To be fair, in order to keep a facade of greatness, you must be wise enough to hide your flaws. And it seems like the Lion City has been doing the sweeping very well. Singapore, indeed, is a beautiful city with great economic power. But this video just showed us how contrasting the two sides of a coin can be. The greatest lesson we can get today is that things that are too good to be true are probably untrue. There is no such thing as perfect. It might be the case that they're just good at hiding Singapore's blemishes. But in all fairness, Singapore is trying to fix its issues. Regulations have been put in place to address underlying problems, and with optimism, let us hope that in the near future, the diagnosis of the lion will be healed from the inside. If you learned something new today, please go ahead and like and subscribe, and let me know your thoughts of the dark side of Singapore.